Imagine you've just taken a powerful hallucinogenic substance, curious about exploring the depths of your consciousness. As the effects take hold, your surroundings begin to warp and shift in impossible ways, making you question the very fabric of reality. The walls appear to breathe, colors bend and dance, and geometric patterns emerge from the shadows, engulfing everything in their intricate embrace. Your heart races as a sudden thought strikes you. What if these hallucinations are not mere figments of your imagination, but rather glimpses into the true nature of reality? In the midst of this psychedelic experience, you encounter strange, otherworldly beings that seem to communicate with you telepathically. Their message is cryptic, yet profound. Reality is not what it seems. With every twist and turn of your journey, the boundary between the hallucination and the real world becomes increasingly blurred. You're left wondering if these entities are simply projections of your mind or, perhaps, the masterminds behind a grand cosmic simulation. Welcome, dear viewers, to the realm of simulation theory, where the lines between perception and reality are as thin as a razor's edge and the truths we hold dear are shaken to their core. Strap in as we dive into a world of existential dread, mind-bending possibilities, and the eternal question, is reality real? The Simulation Theory, a hallucinogenic roller coaster ride. So you've decided to embark on this mind-boggling, reality-questioning journey with us. Good for you. Let's dive deeper into the simulation theory and explore how hallucinogenic experiences could be our golden ticket to uncovering the truth about our existence. Buckle up, because this ride's about to get wild, terrifying, and, well, at times, utterly hilarious. Simulation theory argues that our entire reality might be nothing more than a computer simulation or an artificial construct created by some higher power or, you know, just some advanced aliens with a wicked sense of humor. In this scenario, we're all like characters in an elaborate video game, our lives and experiences merely lines of code in a mind-blowingly complex program. So, basically, the Matrix, but with less leather and bullet time. Now, let's throw hallucinogens into the mix, because why not? Some proponents of simulation theory suggest that hallucinogens, like psychedelics, could temporarily unplug us from our simulated reality, revealing the truth hidden beneath the surface. Imagine having a cheat code that lets you peek behind the curtain of our existence. Pretty trippy, right? In this context, the bizarre visions, altered perceptions, and otherworldly encounters that often accompany hallucinogenic experiences could be our mind's attempts to process and make sense of the actual nature of our existence. Or, you know, it could just be the drugs. Either way, it's one heck of a party. So, are the entities we encounter during these altered states of consciousness simply overactive neurons firing away in our drug-addled brains? Or could they be the puppet masters of the simulation itself, laughing maniacally as they control every aspect of our lives? The answer to this question lies at the heart of our understanding of reality and our place within it. As you ponder these existential conundrums, one thing's for sure. Reality will never seem quite as simple or straightforward again. You're welcome, and sorry in advance for any sleepless nights this might cause. But hey, at least we're all in this simulated nightmare together, right? The role of advanced technology in creating simulations, a sci-fi nightmare turned reality? All right, let's take a break from the hallucinogenic-induced existential crisis and move on to something equally, if not more, terrifying. Advanced technology. Who doesn't love the idea of super-intelligent machines running the show? If you're not feeling a little uneasy yet, don't worry. We'll get there. Simulation theory relies heavily on the idea that advanced technology, far beyond our current level of understanding, could be capable of creating an incredibly realistic simulated reality. Essentially, this would be like plugging ourselves into the most immersive and mind-blowing virtual reality experience you could ever imagine, minus the clunky headset and inevitable motion sickness. Now, you might be thinking, but we're nowhere near that level of technology, right? Well, hold on to your tinfoil hats, because it might not be as far-fetched as you think. Consider how far we've come in just the last few decades. 
From pixelated 8-bit video games to stunningly realistic graphics and virtual reality systems that can transport us to other worlds. Who's to say what's possible in another hundred or even a thousand years? Some experts argue that if we continue along this trajectory of technological advancement, it's only a matter of time before we develop the ability to create simulations indistinguishable from reality. At that point, it becomes a question of probability. If such simulations are possible, how do we know we're not already living in one? And let's not forget about artificial intelligence. As AI continues to advance, it's not too much of a stretch to imagine a future where machines become self-aware, potentially even creating simulations of their own. In that case, we'd be living in a double-layered simulation, with humanity and its AI overlords blissfully unaware that they're both just pawns in a grand cosmic game of Sims. So, as we stare down the barrel of a future where advanced technology could create a simulated reality, it's worth considering the implications. Are we truly real, or are we just a bunch of code in a cosmic computer program? And if that's the case, does it even matter? After all, ignorance is bliss, and at least we can enjoy the ride as we question the very fabric of our existence. Get ready to embrace the chaos, my friends. In the immortal words of Shakespeare, all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players, or, in our case, unwitting participants in a high-stakes game of cosmic charades. Escaping the simulation, is it possible? The great debate between hope and despair. So, you've made it this far. You've questioned your reality, felt the existential dread, and now you're probably wondering, can I escape this simulation, assuming it's real? Well, buckle up, buttercup, because this is where the roller coaster ride gets even wilder. First off, let's acknowledge that the idea of escaping the simulation is based on the premise that we're actually in one. So, let's indulge in that possibility for a moment and explore the potential avenues of escape, shall we? Option 1. The Neo Approach Remember the Matrix? If you're hoping to be like Neo, the hacker-turned-savior who escapes the simulated world, you might be in for a disappointment. While The Matrix provides a thrilling and action-packed escape fantasy, it also simplifies the concept of a simulation. In reality, if we're in a simulation, it's likely that our bodies and minds are just as simulated as the world around us. So, unless you're ready to accept a new existence as a stream of data, there might not be a physical escape route. Option 2. Breaking the System Some might argue that if we can identify the rules and limitations of the simulation, we could potentially find a way to break or manipulate them, effectively escaping the confines of our virtual prison. However, this approach assumes that the architects of the simulation haven't already thought of this and created safeguards to prevent such a rebellion. It's worth considering, but the odds might not be in our favor. Option 3. The Transcendental Gateway What if the key to escaping the simulation lies in our own minds? Spiritual practices and meditation have long been touted as ways to transcend the physical realm and reach higher states of consciousness. Could these practices offer an escape route, allowing us to connect with a reality beyond the simulation? It's a tantalizing idea, but one that ultimately relies on faith and belief more than empirical evidence. In the end, the question of whether we can escape the simulation remains an open debate, teetering on the edge between hope and despair. But maybe the real question we should be asking is not whether we can escape, but whether we should even try. After all, if our simulated reality is all we've ever known, is it any less real or valuable than a hypothetical, real reality? Maybe the key to living a meaningful life isn't in trying to break free from our virtual cage, but in embracing the experiences, relationships, and personal growth that this reality, simulated or not, has to offer.